This video was brought to you by Wondershare Filmora. Hey everyone, Anthony here, and welcome to my Filmora 10 Beginner's Guide 2021. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you are probably aware that I've done two of these videos before, one in 2019 and the other in 2020. Both of those videos did pretty well and seemed to help a lot of people, so at this point, it just makes sense to do another one just updated for Filmora 10 for 2021, yada yada yada. This video is designed for someone who is pretty much a complete beginner to Filmora, or maybe you haven't even bought it yet and you're just doing your research trying to see what features it has. I'm not gonna be editing together anything super elaborate, I've got other tutorials for that. Really, I'm just gonna be messing around with various clips and running through all of Filmora's different features. Just like last time, I will be putting timestamps in the description down below, so if you're looking for something specific, you can skip right ahead to wherever you need to be. If you are a complete beginner, it would probably be most helpful to you if you watched this entire video all the way through. Not gonna lie, it'd be helpful for me as well. But yeah, that's basically what this video is. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to my desktop. Uh, it's a fascinating place, as you can see. Here is Filmora X, I'm just gonna click it. Here we've got the loading screen, very nice, very nice. Okay, so this is the first screen that pops up when you launch Filmora, and if you don't want it to pop up, you can just uncheck this box right here, but I'm gonna keep it checked. You've got your project library right here, so if you were working on anything, you can just click on it and jump right back in. Over here, you've got your project aspect ratio menu. 16 by nine is just regular old widescreen, and it's typically what you're going to want. One by one is if you want to edit a video for Instagram, so it'll frame it in a little square box. Nine by 16 is for editing vertical video, so maybe you shot it with your phone or you're trying to put together a YouTube short or a TikTok or something like that. Four by three is an older aspect ratio. You're not really gonna wanna use it unless you're shooting with really old cameras. And finally, 21 by nine is your cinematic aspect ratio. It's really just to replicate the aspect ratio of movies, uh, but in this case, I am just gonna stick with 16 by nine, and then I'm going to click new project. Now, the speed with which Filmora launches and works is pretty reliant on your PC. My PC isn't really anything special, it's just a gaming computer that I bought at Best Buy and then upgraded a little bit. Admittedly, it's not the greatest PC in the world, but it's also not the worst. And when it comes to video editing, you are going to want to use a relatively nice computer. So that is the unfortunate truth about video editing. You are going to need a good PC to do it, uh, so just be aware of that. But getting back on track, I'm going to do a quick interview face tour here. This right here is your media library. It's where you store all of the footage for your project. Down here is the shared media folder, so if you have a video clip that you want to use across multiple projects, uh, maybe it's an intro for your channel or something, you just drop it into this folder and it'll show up right at launch, ready for you to use. Over here we've got some sample colors that you can just use as backgrounds and stuff. We also have some sample video provided by Filmora. Now I will be importing my own sample footage, but we'll also use some of this because why not? Next up we've got the audio tab. This is just where you'll find some generic music and sound effects that you can use in your project copyright free. It's not the biggest and most comprehensive resource, but it is good enough to get you started, I will say that. There's also a folder called My Music, which is, as you might guess, is where you store your own music and sound effects that you may have downloaded from other sites. All right, next up we've got titles. As you can see, Filmora has provided quite a few animated titles for you to use. They've got things like subtitles, lower thirds, credits, pretty much anything you can think of uh, that you would need for a video project. Next, we've got the transitions panel. There are tons and tons of transitions in here, all of these different categories that you can check out. Next, we've got the effects panel. And just looking at it, it might seem kind of random and overwhelming, uh, but some of these are actually pretty helpful. One that I like is the basic blur effect, and I might use that for putting vertical video in my project. All of the vintage viewfinder or vintage film reel stuff, all of that is really cool, and I like that as well. But enough about that, let's move on to the elements tab. This is where you'll find a bunch of interesting little overlays for your video. Things like animated arrows or icons or whatever, just a pretty good resource to have. Finally, we've got the split screen video tab. Pretty self-explanatory, you just drag it in to the timeline and then drop your video into here and it'll show up side by side. Speaking of, this is the timeline. It's where all of the movie magic happens. It's where you edit and cut together your footage and pretty much just make your video project come to life. And then this is the playback window, which is where you will watch it. And yeah, that is the interface tour. Okay, now circling back a little bit, as I went through all of these panels, you might've noticed this little button right here. It says Wondershare Film Stock, more effects. If I click on it, it will take me to Film Stocks, which is 
basically Filmora's built-in effects store. It's taking a little bit to load here, uh, but they do have a bunch of additional effects, title animations, and elements that you can download and use in your project. But yeah, enough about film stocks, let's start importing some footage. Importing footage into Filmora is really simple. You literally just select your footage and drag it into the library. As you can see, it's all here. If you notice these little circles in the corner, that just means that Filmora is automatically generating proxies for your footage, which are essentially lower resolution preview files to edit with, and it does make editing a bit easier on your computer. But to get started bringing the footage into your project, you basically just click on it, and then you watch it back in the preview window right here. You can scrub through to find the parts that you want, and then you can use this button right here to select an in point, and then this button right here to select an out point. <laughs> Look at my beautiful face. But yeah, once you have your in and out point selected, just grab the footage with your mouse and drag it into the timeline. You can just click match to media and boom, here you go, you've got your first clip. Jump cut, I chose a different clip to work with. After you've got your footage in your timeline, you might want to trim it down a little bit. In a situation like that, you just grab the edges of the clip like this and then drag it to the point where you want it to start. If you want it to end a little sooner, you just grab the edges on the end and then drag it over to the playhead right here. Then of course you've got this gap at the beginning where the footage used to be. You can just right click and hit ripple delete and it automatically removes that space. If you go over here, there is a little slider where you can stretch your footage out and view it frame by frame. That allows you to get in there and make much more precise edits. You can also just grab the top of the timeline and drag it out like that. Okay, now let's check out some of the music and audio sound effects. Okay, so I've got a track here that I like. We can just listen to it for five seconds. I can use the in and out markers to just select the part of the song that I like and only the part of the song that I like. And then I'm just gonna drag it down underneath my clip. I can resize the timeline and you can see that I accidentally selected too much of the song. So I can just grab the edges and drag them down to size like so. Then I just resize the timeline again to make sure I'm seeing all of it. It's a good start, but it still doesn't quite feel right to me, and this is actually a really good moment to demonstrate another feature. I think that the clip actually goes by a little too fast for the music, because the music is pretty slow, but the camera moves really fast, and I can fix that. If I right click on the clip, I can go to speed and duration. And then what I'm gonna do here is actually speed the clip down to about 50%. As you can see, it's spread out a bit. I'm just going to grab the music and drag it to the end. And now I'm gonna play it back and see what I think. As you can see, the camera moving forward in slow motion does fit the music a lot better. So yeah, that is how you do slow motion in Filmora X. But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, audio effects. If you click on the music, this panel will pop up right here. As you can see, there are several different effects such as a denoiser to remove background noise, or you can lower the volume of other clips. Neither of these are really necessary at the moment, uh, but I do want to show you how to fade in and fade out. Now, you could just use these little sliders to have the audio fade in and out, uh, and you'll see, if you look down here, you'll see that shadow moving across the clip. But there is actually another option, and that is to create keyframes. If I scooch my playhead forward a little bit, you'll see that this button right here lights up. I can click it, and as you can see, it adds a dot on the footage right here. I'm gonna scoot my playhead forward and add a few more. What these audio keyframes allow you to do is have better control over the volume levels. So if I just click on this dot and drag it downwards, you'll see that it adjusts the volume level and then has it increase in volume to this keyframe right here. I can also lower the volume on that keyframe, and then you'll see that these keyframes over here take that into account as well. So if I mess with these a little more, you can see that you have a visual representation of how the keyframes affect the volume of the music. Another interesting effect that Filmora 10 has is beat detection. Now I'm just going to quickly delete this music track real quick, uh, and I'm going to reselect it here, and I'm going to click beat detection. Just give it a second, then drag it right back into your project. And now you'll see these little red markers spread out across the clip, and those basically just indicate every time there's a beat. No, not that kind. This right here is an actual completed project timeline. As you can see, it looks pretty complex, but you might have noticed the red dots on this music track right here. They're helpful indicators to have if you're like me and you like to cut to the music, and this tool makes it a lot easier to do that. Okay, so moving back to video, I'm just going to quickly take a moment to run through some of my favorite video effects that Filmora has built in. To be completely honest, I haven't used all of these, there's just way too many, 
but I will point out some of my favorites. I generally like anything that has like a vintage film look. In this case, I'm using one called 70s. There's also this one called Silent Film, though in this case, it would look better if my footage was in black and white. These glitch lines are pretty cool. Old photo. Water, I imagine this would be pretty helpful if you wanted to have a reflection shot. They also have these cinematic lens flares that look really cool. We'll be back at effects in a minute, but let's move on to some basic transitions. Something I've always said throughout all of my tutorials is to keep your transitions really simple. There are some transitions in here that get pretty crazy, and honestly, they're a bit distracting. We're not watching the video for the transitions, so you're going to want to keep them short and simple. The simple speed blurs folder is a really good place to be. The basic folder, also a winner, but again, has a general rule of thumb, don't overdo it. I do want to show you an interesting way that some of these effects can be used as transitions. For example, I can just drag the glitch down on top of the footage. I can make it a little shorter. There you go, that looks pretty cool. These sideways shake filters are another good one. The key is to keep it fast, again, just a quick and simple glitch transition. But yeah, there you go, effects as transitions. Next up, I'm going to talk about titles. Again, there's a pretty good selection here. A lot of these are modern animated titles, or if you don't want the fancy animated stuff, there is the plain text folder. As you can see, it's just text. Plain, simple, easy, and sometimes that's all you need. If you click on the text, this box will pop up over here, and this is where you do basic things like type out what you actually want it to say, or you can change the font and the font size, all of that fun stuff. In this case, I'm just going to choose a bold font, and I'm going to type subscribe to Anthony. You can also do things like select a text style. You've got your position controls right here, so if you wanna make the text bigger, you can do that. Rotate it, I don't wanna rotate it. Or you can drag it along the X and the Y axis, algebra for the win. But sometimes, what they've got here isn't enough. And that's where the advanced button comes in. This is the advanced text edit window, and as you can see, there are a lot more controls for you to choose from. But yeah, I might do something like choose an animation for the text. Again, you don't want something too cheesy or over the top. There are some simple ones. Somewhere in here. Once you have an animation selected, uh, you can see that you can adjust the timing right here. Uh, so I can just do that, make it a little faster. You can also do things in here like add a shadow to the background to maybe make it stand out a little more if it needs it. You can adjust the shadow blur and the distance from the text itself. There's a ton of stuff in here, pretty much anything you need to make a nice video title. I would recommend that you play around here on your own because there's not enough time for me to go over everything. So let's move on. All right, now I do want to briefly touch on Filmora 10's motion tracking feature. And this is a new feature, it was not in Filmora 9, and I do actually have a dedicated tutorial on it, so feel free to check that out if you want, but I am going to talk about it a little here. Basically, the point of this feature is to track moving objects in the frame, and then maybe you can apply text or a special effect of some sort to follow it. So as you can see, I have the box dragged around this guy's head, and I'm just going to click start tracking. It is a little hit or miss in some places, but in that case, it's really easy to just readjust it and track it again. From there, I can just drag an element onto my footage. In this case, the sunglasses, I'll position it over his eyes. Then I'll go to this panel over here, click on the drop down menu, make sure that the shades are selected, and boom, just like that, you can see that they are tracked to his face. But yeah, you get the general idea, and I do have a dedicated tutorial on how to use this feature with special effects from film stocks. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please check it out. There are also some other advanced video effects here that we can check out. Uh, for example, Chroma Key helps you do green screen. In the transform panel, you can rotate or resize the clip. There's also the auto enhance button, but the most interesting and helpful to me personally of all of these advanced features is actually over here in the color panel, and that is the advanced color correction tools that they've got. So a little bit of extra background on me, but photography has been a hobby of mine for pretty much my entire life. And as a photographer, I use apps like Lightroom all the the time to make everything from basic corrections to completely changing up the colors. And what I like about the advanced color correction panel is it's essentially a mini version of Lightroom just inside of Filmora and specifically for video. Under the white balance tab you've got your temperature slider which you can use to make your video warmer or colder depending on what you need and you've also got your tint slider. Obviously in most cases you wouldn't want to go to these extremes, uh, you want to keep it more subtle. Under 3D LUT you've got a bunch of different presets based on different movies. I can just cycle through all 
of them real quick. Certain LUTs will look better on different kinds of footage. For example, here, I think the Mission Impossible LUT looks the best. Under color, you can change things like your exposure and your brightness, even the vibrance and saturation. Under the light panel, you can control things like highlights and shadows. In the case of this clip, since the snow in the background is really bright, I might lower the highlights or the whites a little bit. The HSL panel is one of my favorites because it allows you to have control over individual colors. In the case of this clip, the red on my hoodie is very, very bright, so I might want to lower the saturation of the reds by about 10. And then there's the vignette panel, and honestly, I don't go here a lot because it's a very specific look for very specific purposes. But if you need it, it's there. Finally, I can do a before and after comparison of all of the changes that I made, so take a look at that. And then I can just save all of these settings as a preset and use it on any other clips that I want. But yeah, there you go. That is the advanced color correction panel. Another new feature in Filmora 10 that I find pretty interesting is color match. All right, so I've got these two clips in the timeline. Again, here's the hotel shot. It's in the late afternoon, getting close to sunset. As you can see, the sun's right there. It's a very warmly lit shot. And then we've got this one out by the lake and it's right at midday. It's very bright. There is a lot of blue in this shot. And sometimes these kinds of color differences don't flow very well. And this is where color match comes in. If I just click the clip, I can make sure it's selected right here and then click on comparison view. In this window right here, that's the current clip. That's the one I'm going to change. And this one is the reference shot. So it's whatever frame I want to match the colors to. So I'm just going to choose a good shot of the palm trees and then I'm going to hit match. As you can see, it brightens this clip up and changes the colors to match a lot better. The greens are now tinted with yellow and the sky is slightly overexposed now. I will admit that this tool can be a little hit or miss. Not every shot is going to match well. Sometimes it's just going to make a shot look really weird and ugly. Uh, you can see right here that I tried it multiple different times before finally landing on an example that worked. So yeah, just be aware that it's not gonna work with every shot, uh, but when it does work, it works pretty well. One last thing I'm going to show you are your project preferences settings right here. For example, you can change the language. Now, I personally am from the United States, but I know that not everyone who watches my videos is. You can also change to light mode. Oh, my eyes. You can change basic defaults like the duration of photos when you put them in or the duration of a transition. You can have your project back up every five minutes. Highly recommend this, maybe even every one minute. There are also some basic hardware and uh, performance settings in here, so I'm just going to enable GPU acceleration, uh, that might make it run a little faster for me. You might want to check this box to save space on your computer. This is also where you can control proxy resolution and whatnot, but yeah, there you go. That is the preferences window. Okay, so once you are done editing, and as you can see, I have a very sophisticated edit here. It's one entire clip. It's time to export your masterpiece. Just go right up here to the export button, and then this menu will pop up. Make sure everything's set to best. You can even upload it directly to YouTube. I don't typically do that. You might if you want to. You can also burn your project to a DVD if you still do that. But in this case, I'm just gonna stick with a regular old export. All right, so this is a problem that quite a few of you are likely to encounter. And if you're not logged into your account and you haven't purchased Filmora, you are going to encounter this window right here. It's basically just telling you that you need to buy Filmora to export it without a watermark. In my case, I bought Filmora a long time ago. So all I really need to worry about is that I'm logged into my account. I do get asked a lot, how do you remove the watermark and the simple answer is to just buy it there is really no other way around it but yeah there you go that was my introduction to filmora 10. all right if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and if you didn't enjoy this video and you didn't find it helpful feel free to leave a dislike and a hate comment as well there should be a playlist up here of all of my other filmora tutorials if you want to check that out uh, but that's it for this video thank you for watching subscribe